Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to session Fartook-21. Last time in our Fartook adventure, the party was reunited inside the walls of Phoenix and discussed what they had learned. The elvish members were radiant in their new attire and the group discovered that Fargus Stoutheart could drink a lot. The group retired to their rooms to rest for the night, but Irena thought she had observed someone following them. We rejoined the group in the common room of the Phoenix Inn the next morning. Fargus! Fargus! yelled out Welby O'Toole until he was smacked in the arm by Sister Elaine. The human ranger slowly descended the stairs and did not look well at all. The group sat at the table with disapproving looks on their faces and Fargus pulled out a chair to sit down with them. The scraping of the legs made him wince and it was readily apparent to all that he had consumed too much alcohol the night before. The party quietly finished their meal and discussed the options available to them since finding Gregor with his throat slit. Fargus, oblivious to the information from the previous night, sat dumbfounded as Welby and Sister Elaine re-explained the results of their mission to the dockside. A strange herbal tea was brought to the table by the innkeeper, who slid it in front of the large human. Looking questioningly at the man, Fargus was told that it would ease his noggin pain, which resulted in the ranger eagerly slurping it down, but making a face showing his distaste for the elixir. Cabe and the others began to laugh loudly as Fargus choked on the drink. The bard explained that he was familiar with the tea and had ordered it last night at the tavern. When the human complained that it didn't fix him the previous night, he was told that he'd passed out and farted, as added by the halfling, before he had had a chance to consume it. He nodded sheepishly and made sure he consumed every drop despite the acrid taste. Lady Irena suggested that they return to the Hall of Justice as Lothar was due to be hanged this morning. I'm not thrilled about watching anyone die, but that horse's ass has it coming for nearly killing us all, she added. The group nodded in agreement and paid for their meal this time, and Fargus obtained a mug to go with the herbal tea. Outside, the sun shone brightly and the air seemed unusually fresh this morning. A small crowd had already begun to filter north to the hall where the gallows were present. After traveling to the locale, and being congratulated several times in the process, the group found themselves to one of the raised decks. The judge that had the party recently met along with several men-at-arms were present atop the scaffolding along with a hooded man. <sighs> Greetings all, the judge said, as he went over a litany of charges against Lothar Metal. Finishing the lengthy list, the judge announced that Lothar Metal had been convicted on all charges and that the sentence of death by hanging would now be administered. A pair of guards flanked the hooded man and removed the facial covering, showing the individual to be the wanted criminal the party had dealt with. It is your time to meet judgment, criminal. Do you have any last words, perhaps a pardon to those you offended as you go to meet your maker? bellowed out the judge as a guard put the noose around the man's neck. Blinking repeatedly, Lothar's eyes had finally adjusted to the bright sun. He nodded to the judge and stated he did have something to say. The crowd hushed, intent upon hearing the convict's last words. You can all go to hell without me, you bastards, yelled out Lothar, who kicked one of the guards off the scaffold before spinning around and kneeing another guard in the groin, causing him to topple over as well. A silver key shined in the sunlight and a smiling Lothar attempted to open the lock but quickly realized that the key did not fit. The smile disappeared as the judge yelled for a guardsman to release the trap door. Moving a lever, the scaffold gave way under the criminal and he fell through. The rope went taunt but did not snap Lothar's neck who strained at the pain he was under, his feet flaying violently. The guard atop the scaffold who had been kicked 
rolled in pain but fell through the opening. His arc carried him down towards the criminal who was desperately attempting to catch his breath. As the guard fell, he tumbled onto the top of Lothar's head and a loud snap was heard with the prisoner's body going limp. The guard fell another five feet to the ground, hurting himself on the cobblestones below. A horrified judge looked on from the top of the platform but pronounced, Justice has been served. Additional guards came in and helped their associate out from his injuries, and several people in the audience became physically ill at the sight that had unfolded. The party looked at each other with confused Welby O'Toole, asking if that was how a hanging was supposed to unfold. Sister Elaine, Lady Irena, and Cabe all looked peaked from the horrific experience, which was only made worse by Fargus laughing and doubling over. Wiping away his tears, he clasped Welby on the back, still laughing. No, <laughs> no it is not, he laughed. But it did resolve the problem. <laughs> After a few minutes of gathering their composure, the group attempted to determine their next course of action. Cabe spotted a dusky beauty across the street and noticed that she went into a business called Zamora's Trinkets. Spotting three golden balls above the doorway, he pointed out the pawn shop to his associates. We can go over to that business and ditch that stupid box of yours, Walby. Maybe even get you something more interesting, he added. The halfling shrugged in agreement, but looked crestfallen when Lady Arena warmed him to keep his hands in his pockets. You don't trust me? he asked the mage, but her stoic look told it all. He shoved his hands into his pockets and the group moved through the dispersing crowd to the business. Upon entering the quaint building, bells above the door sounded. The interior front of the structure was covered in bookshelves and lit candles, giving the room a soft ambiance. The multitude of trinkets on the bookshelves caused Welby to become slack-jawed and he brought his hands out of his pockets slowly, only to be wrapped up on the wrists by Cabe. A small table and chairs sat in the center of the room. This place stinks, remarked the large human ranger. Sister Elaine pointed out some smoldering incense on the shelf as the source. A few moments later, the dusky brunette reappeared, her makeup slightly askew, as if she had been crying. <sighs> Welcome, my friends. What can Zamora do for you? As she put down a leather satchel on the table. A broad smile crossed the face of the bard, but he received an elbow to the ribs from Irena, who saw a lurid look in his eyes. Sister Elaine noticed the distracting effect the gorgeous woman had on Fargus and Cabe, and quickly took control of the situation. Well met, Lady Zamora. It is a pleasure to meet you. We have a strange item that we've recovered during one of our adventures, and wondered if you could possibly tell us something about it. If it suits your fancy, it may even become yours for the right price. Zamora looked at both Cabe and Fargus, up and down, and told the group she liked getting the right price in a deep, throaty voice that made the two males giggle like schoolboys. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.